Hi everybody, it's Mag. I'm back to do another shave video for you. The next state in our Shaving America series is a big one. So it's going to be a two-parter, part one, right now. So you were looking at the state flag for California, and California is so huge that it's actually broken up into north and south. And there's actually different scents for both the north and the south. So in the northern region of California, the scents that are popular there are pear, apple, and apricot. So I'm going to go with apricot. And we're going to use one of the new shave samples, the shave soap that we got from Murphy and McNeil. So here's the sample, and it's called Nade by Murphy and McNeil, right? So Nade actually means zero. And uh, in case you did not watch my haul video or are familiar with Murphy and McNeil, they are big supporters of autism. So in 2018, the CDC estimated that one in 59 children were diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. A spectrum individual uh, can have a range of difficulties from hypersensitivity to sounds or smells that can make life in public challenging, self-injuring behavior, or even seizures. Uh, so autism typically appears in the first three years of life. Early diagnosis and intervention through therapy, uh, such as applied behavioral analysis or ABA, are one of the most proven ways to help children uh, prepare and their families prepare for life with autism. It's not a cure but specialized learning will help improve communication development, coping, and social interaction. Now, if you haven't been exposed to or have to dealt with these challenges, they could be vastly expensive, and there's limited coverage from insurance. And there's no harder scenario than to try to get resources to help and improve quality of life. So, NAID, this soap, right, meaning zero, was the first in the Murphy and McNeil line that they dedicated to supporting families with autism. So if you make a purchase at Murphy and McNeil, then they will donate a portion of the proceeds to help fund this cause. So thank you to you guys out at Murphy and McNeil for contributing and helping uh, this disease that is suffered by so many. And thank you to any of you viewers who go to their site and purchase a shave soap. They have a lot of great soaps out there. This was just a sample pack. They're very inexpensive. I'll put a link to their site in the description of this video, and I'll put it right here on the screen for you as well. So with that said, let's get on with the shave. And we're gonna put this shave soap in our fine bowl. We're gonna mix it up using the West Coast Shaven Synthetic uh, beacon brush, I, I believe is what it's called, and this is the ivory handled brush. And of course, to match that, we're going to use our Edwin Jaeger DE87 ivory handled razor. And it's not, again, it's not a mail call, but I have a few products that we're going to use uh, today that are, are fairly new. So um, for the pre shave, we're going to have the art of shaving pre-shave oil. This is the unscented version. And for the post-shave, we're going to use some Dove Men Care. And I picked this up and I want to give that a try as well. So that's new that we're going to use. And I ordered from Amazon in this bag are 18 different brands of razor blades. There's like a hundred blades in here. Now they're all in boxes. They're not loose, so I won't cut myself. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I am going to randomly select. In fact, uh, I know that there's an Ostra in here and a Voshod, uh, and I think uh, Ladas. So I already have those. I've only tried the Ladas. I haven't tried the Voshod, um, and I haven't tried the. Oh no, I've tried the Ostra. So I've, so I've only um, not tried one of them. But I'm gonna try to pick one, and that's the one that we're gonna try today. And it is, ooh, interesting. So this is. Shark Super Stainless Blades. 
There you go. There's one of them that we got in the order. So it's just a grab bag of goodies. Let me see if I can open this. And we're going to try a shark blade today. And I have some growth. And I understand that uh, shark are a little on the uh, sharper side. I don't know if it's the the, uh, the chrome or the super stainless or the platinum, but we're going to try the super stainless blade today and hopefully it will do the job. So we'll just put the blade right here in the razor and then we'll make sure that we uh, get you some facts about California. There is our shark blade all set to go. I'm going to put the, uh, the base on. We're going to screw the handle on. So I don't know if you could see it, All right? But nice, nice blade in there. We got the shark ready to go. Okay. So to start things off, I'm going to tell you a little bit about California. It joined the United States with the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Uh, that ended the Mexican-American War in 1848. Now the U.S. paid Mexico 15 million for war damages, and in turn, Mexico ceded nearly half of its territory, including California, along with Arizona and New Mexico, Texas, and parts of Colorado, Nevada, and Utah. So California officially became the 31st state in 1850. Now it's known as the grizzly bear state, as you saw in our state flag. And the bear population was wiped out and Ever since, it became known as the Golden State, but here's a picture of, uh, of the grizzly bear that is featured in the state flag, right? It's a tribute to Monarch, which is a 1,200-pound wild California grizzly bear. Now, Monarch was sent to San Francisco, where he was a star attraction at Woodward's Garden Golden Gate Park, until his uh, demise in 1911. So the last reported sighting of a wild California grizzly bear was 1924. So there's a little bit to get you started. We're gonna get some water on the face. Uh, it's a nice afternoon on a Sunday. We're just uh, got the work done outside. It's still warm. As you can see, I got the tank top on. I'm going to break open the uh, shave soap just a little bit because I'm going to try to conserve the pouch. Let's see. And now there's a lot of cream in here, so I'm just going to kind of work it down to the corner I just ripped open. There we go. Get a little bit of that cream out here. Hard to do with one hand, but let's see if we can. Do it down here, make it go a little faster. Good size almond dollop in pieces, but there we go, we have it in the bottom of the bowl. We're just gonna take our West Coast Shaving Beacon brush. And we're gonna let that soak in hot water just for a second. Take some of this uh, pre-shave unscented art of shaving oil rub that on the old whiskers now this reminds me of a Christmas smell it's unscented but yeah it's, it smells nice I just I can't place it but it, it reminds me of Christmas I don't know maybe if it's like a some kind of scent from a tree or it's not cookies that's for sure or candy canes i think it just reminds me of a tree like a pine scent or something there we go now this stuff is slick so i just need to rinse the hands off real quick that art of shaving oil is slick stuff, man. Thick too, very thick. All right, put that 
over there. Let's close this up so we don't spill any. Okay. Now we're going to take the brush. Let's let it drip out here a little bit. So, just to give you guys an idea, just mixing it up in here, the bowl, uh, uh, the, the size and the population of California. Ooh, I smell that apricot. Very nice. So, California uh, has 38 million people, and that's about one out of every eight Americans are basically from California. That's how, how much uh, population is in the state of California. But this synthetic brush holds a lot. But we're doing pretty good. I mean, <laughs> that's just that's got a lot of soap in it right there. So I'm just gonna dribble just a couple little drops. Just get this going here. A little bit more soap. The fortune cookie was invented in uh, California. Well, it was actually it was Japanese, but uh, it was brought to California, right? It was the uh, first. It was first served at the Japanese tea garden. So, if you like fortune cookies, you like. Uh, Oriental or Asian cuisine, you know, see if you can visit California and go up to the tea garden. All right, this is doing real nice. So lots of lather. This this brush just sucks it up. But it lathers real good. All right, let's go with what we got there. Very pleasant smell. Very nice, fruity. Mm. That's why the unscented oil is on there because I didn't want to interfere with the scents from the soap. I got some. Heavy, heavy air on my face because I haven't shaved in a while. There we go. Yeah, real thick. Spreads nice, man. This this thing's got tons of lather. All right, let's put it down. We'll rinse the fingers off. Don't want to drop the razor. Oh man, let me tell you. So California is the only state in the U.S. that hosted both the Summer and the Winter Olympics. Okay. So shark, first time use in the Edwin Yeager. New soap. Let's give it a shot. Yep. I can definitely feel that blade working. Oh yeah. Chopped it down real nice. So, there are a lot of things that I was able to find doing the research in California. Now, I started to do some research on the southern part, but there is there's a lot that is like mid-state, or what they call northern part of California, but just above the mid-state. So... It's, I guess, if you were to visit 
there's some stuff to do uh, in the north. But as you migrate towards the south, there's certainly a lot more available touristy wise. Yeah. So the scent on this soap is very pleasant. It did a good job. All right. So let me uh, share another fact about California with you. Got an itch on the nose. So uh, everybody knows about the gold rush, right? California was famous for the gold rush. It began in 1848. It also had a silver rush. Uh, and that took place in the Calico Mountains uh, between 1881 and 1896. And then by 1904, Calico became a ghost town. Uh, there was a lot of little towns that I had found that, uh, you know, made reference to success because of the gold rush. And then all of a sudden when it dried up and the miners dispersed or maybe it didn't produce a lot in the gold mine, etc., they became ghost towns. Now, some of them have been renovated and they're tourist attractions now, so they're populated, but uh, here's a picture of, uh, of the Calico ghost town. So there's a place that you can go visit, uh, get uh, to look at some of the sites and make reference to some of the things that happened back in the day of the gold rush. Now, if you're familiar with the state seal for California, there is a one-word expression on the seal. Eureka! And that is due to a discovery. You know, when you get an idea, hey, Eureka! You know? So there was a Greek scholar that, uh, that was actually about to take uh, a bath stepped into his tub and he had an epiphany when he put his foot in the tub he was able to see the water rise and the displacement from his foot caused the volume of the water to, to go up so upon that discovery he ran out of the room totally forgetting that he was about to take a bath and he was nude at the time <laughs> and he shouted Eureka <laughs> and uh, well the rest is uh, another story. But that's where the word comes from in the state seal. So the legend has it. The shark blade is uh, doing pretty good. For its first use, I could definitely feel it. It is on the sharper side. But it's not too bad. Not too bad. It's not mild, but it's not completely off the charts aggressive. I am glad I put some pre-shave oil on though, just to help with the glide. It's very thick, like you could see right there, right? That's from the oil. You know, the art of shaving oil is very, very slick, very, very thick. So we'll have to give this a good cleaning. Well, we're all done here today. Rotate. I think that'll do it. For pass one. Yeah. Yeah, that shark boy. It handled real well. All right, let me rinse the face with some warm water and I'll be right back. There we go. Quick rinse. All right. Boy, this soap has lots of staying power. I mean, this is 
I love the scent. I love the scent. You know, I did not pick up the uh, aftershave or the balm, but it's be a uh, this would be a nice, refreshing, uh, relaxing, enjoyable scent. If it if it smells anything like the soap. Normally it would probably have a more staying power and be a little bit stronger. But I enjoy it. And these sample packs I think were $2.99. Free shipping. So definitely worth giving them a try. I mean, you could see here how nice the lather goes on. And I already had pass one, so. Very nice and. You can make it thick, thin. Yeah. my brush on the nice fine handle. So some other facts uh, to share with you uh, for the state of California. I know that uh, there was the stock market uh, crash in 1929 and uh, that was a result of the depression but in 1933 there were only 11,000 banks left after the crash and all of the banks in San Francisco survived. So they didn't shut one bank down uh, from the huge impact from that uh, that stock market crash. So that's that's pretty amazing. Uh, California is also home to both the highest and lowest points in the U.S. And both of those items are only 76 miles apart. Either your highest point, which is uh, 14,494 feet tall is uh, the peak of Mount Whitney. And then 76 miles away is uh, bad water in Death Valley, which is 282 feet below sea level. And they're really close together. So you can get uh, two things checked off the list if you like to do hiking or you wanna go down into Death Valley. Uh, oh, and Northern California is also home to the oldest tree. Here's a picture of that. Now that is a bristlecone pine tree. It's estimated to be about 5,000 years old. It lives in the White Mountains, but where exactly, nobody knows. And those that do are keeping its location secret, so nobody can mess with that tree. Let's get the old pass two underway here. Yeah, nice scent. I do enjoy this soap. The shark blade is performing nice. First time we're using that. Yeah. Just gonna go back the other way and make sure there's nothing left over there. Okay. Uh, so there's a there's an empire mine in California, which is the largest, deepest, and longest gold mine in California. It produced 5.8 million ounces of gold and it closed only recently in 1956, which wasn't that long ago considering the beginning of the gold rush. Uh, it cost more money to bring the gold up than it was worth. So, you know, geologists still estimate that there's 20% of the gold that's only been removed from this mine. So if you're in, uh, if you're still into Gold Rush history. Or maybe you have uh, some investors and you're a wealthy individual and you want to, you know, take a crack at getting some gold. You can always look to, uh, to talk to the state of California, maybe reopen its, uh, its 
mining efforts. Uh, but here's a map of the gold rush, and this will show you all the touch points uh, that were along uh, the gold rush kind of pathway. Uh, there's one that dips into Nevada, but most of them are in uh, California. It was pretty neat, right? Uh, so, I mean, it, they're all over the place. They, they go from about mid-state all the way down to the, uh, the southern part of the state. But certainly, it really drew population. I mean, there are many, many uh, little towns and places that... Uh, that just had a population boom. They, they had more people coming in than they had housing for uh, and they couldn't they couldn't sustain uh, but they were only there to participate in the, in the gold rush and then once it dried up or basically the mine shut down and there was nothing else to mine they thought it was empty what have you then everybody just cleared out and those towns went back to nothing and everything they created to sustain the big spurt in population all of a sudden cost too much and everybody moved away and that was that so some of the big things that I haven't talked about yet in California it's the Golden Gate Bridge the Golden Gate Bridge is a suspension bridge and it held the record for 27 years being the longest bridge of its kind and uh, only in 1964 did it give up that title to the uh, newly constructed Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which is based in New York. The original tolls to cross that bridge were 50 cents each way. Now the tolls are six bucks. <laughs> so, inflation! But uh, Highway 101 and California Route 1 uh, both go over the bridge. It connects the city of San Francisco at the northern tip of the San Francisco Peninsula to Marin County. Now, it's, it's been declared one of the wonders of the modern world, and it contains 83,000 tons of steel, and there's enough concrete to build a five-foot sidewalk, a five-foot wide sidewalk from San Francisco to New York. That's a lot of concrete. <laughs> um, now it, it's, uh, it's built to withstand 90 mile per hour winds and it can stand up to an 8.0 earthquake. Now it's got an orange color and that was done to stand out amongst the fog and make it more visible. And it also has fog horns to help vessels navigate safely because of the San Francisco fog. So construction lasted four years from 1933 to 1937. And the bridge, obviously, given the name Golden Gate, spans the Golden Gate, which is the opening of San Francisco Bay into the Pacific Ocean. So that is an is a iconic, tremendous suspension bridge that's been around for many, many years. Uh, so, you know, decades, I guess you could say. And if you go visit the San Francisco area, of course, you have to go see the Golden Gate. Now, there's also a place called Silicon Valley. <laughs> and that's a region in the southern part of San Francisco Bay Area, which is in the northern part of California, uh, that serves as a global center for high technology innovation and social media. The integrated circuit, the microprocessor, and the microcomputer are well-known technology components that were developed in that region. So there's tons of technology businesses. They employ like greater than 250,000 IT workers. So if, if you want a job or if you have, you know, any 
technological background, you want to be where it's where it's at, and then you go to Silicon Valley trying to land a job. All right, let's see where we're at. Yeah, two pass. Oh, I can still smell that soap. That's wonderful. But that shark blade, I mean, no cuts, no redness. Oh, it did great on my neck. This is the part that really I have a problem with. And that's super right here underneath the jawline. I even have a little pimple and it didn't even snag that. I'm a BBS with two passes. Wow, that blade's fantastic. Okay, let me do a quick rinse and I'll be right back. So, now that we have accomplished our two pass BBS shave with the shark blade and using the Nade Apricot Shave Soap from Murphy and McNeil, we're gonna use some Dove to rehydrate with. We'll just spread some on. We're going to go out into the uh, warm sun. We're going to have a little cookout today. So it should be very nice and pleasant for a family gathering. And this was an excellent shave. Thank you all for joining me. I had a great time. And these products were wonderful. So if you're looking to try something new, certainly go ahead and try Murphy and McNeil. Again, I'm gonna link their site in the description below the video. And thank you all for watching. We appreciate those of you that had subscribed to the channel. And uh, welcome to all the new subscribers if you happen to view this video. And we look forward to reading your comments and we hope to see you again in the next video, which will be coming out real soon. All right, until then, enjoy, and we'll speak to you in the next video.